Hi guys, so I guess I started my painting journey about seven, eight months ago and have to say I'm absolutely loving it. And my journey started by one single video and that was the one by Honest Wargamer, the slap chop technique, the best way to paint miniatures fast. And that single video turned me from, well, absolutely hating painting miniatures and never really painting them to absolutely love painting them and I paint them, well, every day. And each time I paint one, I feel I get a bit better because I try new things out. So before we can paint a miniature, we need a few tools. Um, don't need many, so that's why I love about this hobby. It's not too expensive. Uh, well, the miniatures might be expensive, but the tools required, as you can see, very simple. Some glue, some snippers, and a scalpel. And then obviously a miniature to, well, to unbox, to assemble, to make, and then paint. So this miniature was kindly sent to me by B Computers. There's a link down in the description, guys. They do lots and lots of games workshop miniatures, reasonably priced and free delivery in the UK. So yeah, go check them out guys um, and send them some love. I'm sure you're probably all aware by now that I absolutely love orcs and yeah, I do love obviously the orc bosses. So this nice, lovely big chap on top of this squig that looks like a shark is just awesome. So get the bits out, uh, obviously the instructions, we will read those even though it seems fairly sort of easy to look. And there's two options which I love because that means I'm gonna have some spare bits for my bits box. So we've got a base, uh, normally I throw these away and put the miniatures on clear bases uh, but I only do that for miniatures that I'm actually going to play with. So I only play kill teams and obviously this dude, well, as much as I'd love to play him in a kill team, um, yeah, I don't think my mate would be too chuffed. So this one I'm going to do a proper base on which is going to be pretty cool. So yeah, there's, there are some bits that can be spare and left over. I say that's one thing I do love about the Warhammer miniatures, quite often you do get lots of little bits left over and I do enjoy having to go out kit bashing which obviously I've done in this video because I've turned my guy into a bit of a pirate. Arr. Um Just because say the squig that he's on, uh, I had a look at quite a few variations on how they were painted and I think the one I really liked the most was where it looked like it was a shark. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my dude. So cut the bits off and there's generally little bits here and there we need scraping. Uh, most of these are where it was attached to the sprue. I probably do need to get some decent clippers. I mean I just use real cheap clippers and as much as they can get quite near to sort of cutting the thing neatly, um, you can get the more expensive ones. I think they're sort of flat ones or something. So yeah, you can sort of cut right up to the part you're cutting out. But uh, hey-ho, I'm just going to use the one that I've got and then do a little bit of scraping afterwards. Uh, there's a few mould lines on this chap as well. So obviously I needed to go row over and give them a little bit of a cleaning down. But um, yeah, it didn't take too long at all. And then straight on to gluing it together. Again, it's quite a simple little miniature this, but I did follow the instructions just because sometimes there are some bits that need to be assembled before others. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it is worth looking or reading the instructions first. So one thing I have noticed quite recently with a lot of my obviously painted videos is there's a lot of you guys out there that are getting back into sort of painting miniatures um, because of watching one of my videos, which for me is just awesome. I say I got into painting because I watched someone's video so the thought that you guys are getting into painting because you watched my video uh, is just great. And yeah, there's quite a lot of people that are getting back into painting after, well, quite a big gap. Um, and yeah, they are loving obviously this sort of painting technique. And yeah, it's just great that everyone can sort of get involved, try these things out. And I say for me, this, this journey is just getting better and better because I've been watching videos, probably like yourselves. Uh, a lot of people out there I watch that are good painters. Um, and they make things look really, really easy. But as we all know, sometimes when we try things, they're not easy. Uh, people make it look easy because they've had lots of practice and yeah, they've just got better over time. So sometimes we do need to be a little bit uh, easier on ourselves and say, enjoy the process, enjoy what we're doing um, and eventually things will, will come to us. And as I say, my painting journey is it's just getting better and better. I absolutely love painting miniatures. Um, I've got a good fondness and confidence in painting miniatures and that's the biggest thing having the confidence to paint something does mean you're more inclined to well obviously enjoy it and want to try new things out and do a bit of experimenting uh, with things that you possibly wouldn't have done in the past so yeah I say the fact that people are sort of gaining that from watching my videos um, yeah is just awesome so back to this chap obviously say there's a couple of well, two variations on how the squig looks and obviously how the uh, the guy sitting on his back looks but I've gone for the one that looks more like he's a shark 
Um, and yeah, so as soon as I realised I was going to paint him like a shark, it was then a case of yeah, I want to uh, I want to make the boss on the top uh, into a pirate. Even though as you can see, originally I did sort of paint or not paint, I assembled him um, as he's meant to be. Uh, but then say so yeah, when I put him together, it was then a case of thinking oh yeah, he can look better as a pirate. And this is where, as well as obviously love painting miniatures, I do enjoy a bit of kit bashing. Um, yeah, just to turn something into, well, I would say a one-off. Um, but after assembling this guy into how he looks, I then went and had another little look online about how to sort of paint um, this squig. And I came across a video by Pete the Wargamer, someone I'm actually subscribed to, uh, who did exactly the same. He made the same sort of head and the, uh, the arm conversion that I'm about to do. Um, so yeah, so quite often when we think we're doing things like for the first time, we aren't really. There's so many people who have done lots of things before. Um, but yeah, so Peter Wargamer did this a good year or so ago. Um, I think I've been watching him, well, I've been watching him for about the last, well, probably seven, eight months. Um, yeah, since my enjoyment of painting miniatures, that's when I really am now sort of following a lot more, well, painting sort of um, people. As opposed to before I was watching a lot more sort of scratch builders and that sort of thing. So yeah, cheers Pete the Wargamer, you beat me to this by, well, by a mile off. Which isn't too surprising as, well, your channel is primarily kit bashing. Which is why I now watch it, because yeah, kit bashing is awesome. And obviously your painting skills are, well, far exceed mine. But obviously it's always good to watch someone who's better than yourself, because that's how, well, that's how you're going to learn. And that's something I really love about this hobby. The fact that there are so many people that are into this, uh, everyone's friendly and helpful. And yeah, willing to sort of show what they've done. And yeah, help to improve each other, which is just awesome. So, as he's going to be a pirate, uh, he obviously needs a parrot. Uh, but in this case, he's got a little squig sitting on his shoulder. Um, not too sure where I got that from. But um, yeah, a little squig on his shoulder and obviously the base. So, I want to make the base more sort of nautical and piratey themed. So, I use my Anycubic Photon Mono 2 to 3D print out some bits. Awesome little printer guys, uh, this is quite a sort of an easy one to start with, it's very small and I believe it's, you can get about $160 will get you this printer, uh, it's 4k and yeah the prints are just awesome. So link in the description guys if you're after a printer as I would definitely highly recommend the Anycubic Photon Mono 2 as yeah as your first printer. So yeah obviously I wanted to do a few bits to him um, as in give him a peg leg so I'm going to chop his leg off in a minute and use a little stick for that uh, and this, this is always the fun bit and sometimes the worrying bit when cutting up a miniature as obviously you don't want to cut too much off but sometimes you need to cut enough off to well do whatever it is you're trying to do so yeah a little snip here a little snip there um, but the good thing is if we do make a few mistakes we can try and rectify them or fill them using a bit of the old green stuff and I think this is where my love of painting miniatures has made me want to make the miniatures, well, better. Uh, so in the past, well, whenever I did paint the odd miniature, which was very few and far between, I would literally get the miniature, assemble it as it was, and then just chuck some paint on. Um, obviously never been happy with any of the results or any of the actual process or no enjoyment whatsoever. But now I am enjoying painting the miniature. Um, yeah, I really want to make these miniatures the sort of best they can be. Uh, and that's why I think I will be doing a lot more kit bashing, just to make them well a bit more unique, a bit more me. Um, and yeah, say if I'm going to really enjoy painting the miniature, I want to paint the miniature that uh, I've taken care over putting together. He says as he's using these um, this <laughs> these snips just to brutally mangle and try and prise off uh, this foot that I glued. Again, if I'd thought about it, I obviously would have cut the foot off before gluing him and assembling him. Uh, but it wasn't until actually I assembled the whole thing that I really thought, yeah, I'm going to go to town here and make this dude a, uh, well, a pirate dude. So guys, if there is any kind of like kit bashing you want to see me do or see me make, uh, yeah, by all means, let me know in the comments, guys, as, well, I, I am buying more and more miniature sets. Uh, obviously, where I can, I'm um, getting miniature sets sent to me for free. Um, like, say, like this figure from B Computers. Um, yeah, by all means, anyone wants to send me anything, uh, even if it's like leftover bits, uh, yeah, there's a link in the description to my email. Uh, drop me a message, and yeah, I'll happily accept any bits and pieces you may have left over on the sprue, just because I really want to get my bits box, well, bigger. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving, um, well, making bits and pieces up. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments anything you want to see me make. 
So yeah, with the bass, um, I know if you watch a lot of my videos, you will see me obviously talk about the fact I like clear basses, but that is just purely for when I'm playing a game. I like my miniatures to be able to see, well, whatever terrain is underneath them. Uh, but as this guy is from Warhammer 40k, which is something I probably would never play, um, but obviously I love the miniatures, so that's why I'm always going to be making, assembling, kitbashing their miniatures. Um, yes, yeah, so I do love doing things with the bases, because I kind of see these as little dioramas. So again, that's why I want to sort of spend the time, take the care, um, and yeah, really sort of make it look look decent. So I've really printed these uh, these little bits out, say on the Anycubic Photon Mono 2. Um, and they're just they're basic planks. And guys, all the stuff I get is pretty much from Thingiverse. So go on to Thingiverse, because obviously everything on there is free. And, well, I like free stuff. Um, and I just typed in uh, wooden planks. And, yeah, these popped up. So got them from Thingiverse, and obviously 3D printed them. And now it's just a case of putting them down. And the reason for putting the grout underneath is because I wanted these um, like floor panels to be uneven. Um, but obviously if I just glued them straight down onto the base, then they would have been all too flat and neat. Uh, and I didn't want that. And also, with the squig, I kind of want him at an angle. So to get that angle, that's why I've got the floorboard sort of coming up. But then I thought, with well, the floorboard's up, there's got to be a reason why the floorboard has been pushed up. So again, with the diorama, it's like a little story as well, which I kind of love. So the tentacles are coming through the floorboard, that's pushing it up. And then, say, the nice little angle of the squig sort of stepping on the floorboard that's at an angle, and he's onto the uh, the barrel there. So I've got this stuff, which I always forget what it's called. Um, it's kind of like green stuff, but a whole lot cheaper. Not as good quality if you want to do sort of fine detailed work. Especially this stuff. Uh, this stuff has been sitting in a drawer for a good year, which is why one of the colours had gone a little bit weird. It was a bit crusty. And it did take quite a lot of time for me to sort of like knead this and move it around, squishing it, warming it up. Um, wasn't too sure how it was going to look, but say I was only going to fill in a few small gaps and I'm going to use this to make the barnacles. So it didn't need to be too neat or precise because, yeah, I wasn't doing any sort of like detailed work with it. So I'm adding some glue just to make sure these will stick to wherever I'm putting them. Um, I mean, they may well stick anyway, because normally when they dry hardened, they kind of stick. But say, this stuff is so old, I'm really not too sure what it's going to do. So yeah, a little dub of glue, and then yeah, these things, nice and simple barnacles. Make it into little circles, and then push them on, make a little hole. And then once I've got quite a few of these on, I'll get another sort of sharp tool, just to add a little bit of texture to the outside. Um, but yeah, something again, something simple, but quite effective. And definitely keeping with the sort of the pirate themed look. Um, and yeah, again, I, I was just loving, I was loving the whole of this. I was really enjoying the making uh, because I knew I was going to enjoy the painting so much as well. So again, it kind of makes you want to do do a better job, which is just awesome. Okay, so now it's on to the fun bit and that's the painting. So as you can see, he's all primed in black. I've stuck him onto my little painting handle just because this obviously makes it easier and handy for me to sort of hold him and not get, uh, well, not get paint on me. And yeah, using my good old textured dry palette thingy, what's it? Um, yeah, absolutely love this and it just works wonders and it looks great. And I use this to get the paint off of my brush. So it is then a well dry brush. And then yeah, simply going over the whole model. So the gray I use is kind of like, well, it's like a mid range between the black and the white. Um, yes, yeah, I know a lot of people do ask me sort of what, well, what color gray I use. And to be honest, I just use the cheapest gray I can buy. Um, so sometimes I just use like the kids poster paints and just get a mixture of black and white and yeah mix them together and it seems to work wonders. So as you can see though when I'm doing the dry brushing with the grey it's a dry brush but it's there's a lot of still on there. Um, just so I get a good coverage of the whole sort of thing. Um, so really we will leave the nooks and crannies nice and dark but then obviously a lot of it will be sort of in the grey. Uh, but then when I come to do the dry brush with the white the brush really is dry, so this really does just capture or get in contact with the, the raised areas. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely love the result this gives. So much so that I kind of really like the look of the miniature being, well, black and white. Um, yeah, it's just something about it. It just seems to have a lot of sort of texture and colour. Obviously no colour. Um, but I think it's like when you look at a, a photo. When you look at a black and white photo, for some reason I find that I can look at a black and white photo for longer than a coloured one 
just because you really sort of see more more detail, more, I don't know, more character. There's just something about it I love. And yeah, this is no exception. I just love it when I paint a miniature and it's, well, grayscaled black and white. And now onto the fun and easy bit of turning, well, the black and white sort of miniature we now have into a lovely coloured one. And again, using lots of speed paints. Um, yeah, speed paint 2.0. Absolutely love them, although I kind of loved the original speed paints. Um, didn't really have any issues with them. Uh, but yeah, speed paint 2.0, obviously I love even more because there's so many. There's so many different variations in the colours, uh, which is just awesome. So like for the browns, I've got about eight, eight different browns to choose from, um, which just makes it great because it means I can do a miniature with a variety of different browns and, well, and then obviously looking different from each other. The other thing I love about the Speed Paints 2.0 is, well, they're dry in time. They do dry a whole lot quicker than the uh, the previous ones, uh, which is, yeah, which is really good. So trying out a few different sort of uh, paints now, because um, what I need to do is actually sort of keep a little journal or a log of each of the Speed Paints I use, um, just almost marking them out of 10, just on how well they cover, how well they dry, and, yeah, just how well they look. Um, there's, there's only a couple of Speed Paints so far that I've used, that I've not been fussed on and probably wouldn't use again. But uh, in general, yeah, they've all been pretty good. So I'm using Battleship Grey here, one I haven't used before. And initially when I was putting this on, I kind of didn't think much of it. It seemed very watery and translucent. Um, but again, it's one of those ones where when it dries, it looks well, it looked really good. Um, and yeah, absolutely loved the sort of the grey look that it gave. Um, especially say, because this is meant to be, or in my eyes, this is going to be like a shark sort of squig, squig shark, I guess, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I loved how it dried. So here's another case of trying out a paint I haven't used before, and that's Plasmatic Bolt. Um, yeah, obviously, so I, I love orcs. I, yeah, I just love them, can't get enough of them. I do like trying different greens. I do have my favorites when it comes to painting orcs, um, but yeah, every now and then it is fun to try a different kind of green, just in case I prefer a different one. I say, because this guy is obviously a pirate, I've kind of gone with a green that's got a little hint of blue in it. Um, just to give it, again, more of that sort of aquatic sort of sea sort of feel. Um, yeah, this is obviously a pirate dude. He's out on the high seas. And yeah, I think he should have a bit more of a, a skin tone to kind of reflect the sea. So yeah, this is definitely a more greeny blue than the, uh, the greens that I would normally use for an orc. So guys, if watching my videos has got you back into painting or given you a new love of painting, yeah, please let me know in the comments. Um, I say it's just great that we can all share what we're doing and share our stories. And I say for me, this, yeah, painting, um, I can't say I love it enough. It's, it's really changed, or this technique has really changed my whole feeling about painting. And I say the fact that I am now trying so many different sort of techniques, trying out so many different things, and yeah, I'm, I'm watching a lot of painting sort of videos recently just to try and pick up extra little bits and pieces that I can have a go at doing um, and obviously sharing with you guys. So yeah, please let me know in the comments if, uh, yeah, if my sort of videos have inspired you to get back into painting or given you a new love of painting. Because uh, I know I've certainly got a love of it. Uh, so yeah, for me, this journey is just getting better and better. And yeah, having you guys along for the journey is awesome, as I am now doing a lot more, well, we've been doing a lot more live streams. So yeah, painting along, having you guys there is just awesome. Because this this guy, I was painting last night in a live stream. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was painting for about four hours. <laughs> so this is a case of when I'm doing live streams, um, whatever I'm painting will take about three times as long as I do generally waffle and talk and chat quite a lot. Uh, I do get some painting done, but yeah, say so this guy, I probably could have painted him, I reckon I could have painted him with the speed paints in about an hour, and then doing all the uh, the edge highlighting, uh, adding the rust, and everything else would be in about another half hour, an hour. So yeah, so this dude, if I was on my own, I could have done him in about two hours, but say last night I was live streaming, um, and I think I was live streaming for just under five hours, and I nearly had him done, but not quite, so I did have to finish him off um, this morning. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the video, guys. I'm certainly enjoying painting this dude, and I say, this journey of painting is just getting better and better. Well, I've just realized how long this video currently is, and I've got about another 20 minutes of footage that I've already shortened down. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm gonna sort of speed up a little bit now, 
just because I'm not too sure how long you guys would want to sit and watch a video. Um, I know I'm always going on and talking about I like 18 or 8 to 14 minute videos, as that seems a good length. Obviously, I've already exceeded that, and there's still lots more to show. Um, but yeah, guys, let me know in the comments if you're okay with videos being sort of this kind of length, or if you would prefer me to shorten them down, well, a whole lot more. I'm guessing this video is a bit longer because obviously the time spent in doing a bit of kit bashing, uh, a bit of 3D printing, so to get the model ready um, obviously took longer than it would normally because I say, I do enjoy, well, I enjoy kit bashing, especially because if I'm going to paint something, I want it to look, well, the best it can look. And yeah, it is fun to cut <laughs> to cut the toys up um, and then just like smash them together. So uh, yeah, again, guys, please leave comments down below on what you want to see me make. Um, if you like the longer videos, if there's anything you want to see me do differently, um, say have a go at a different painting technique. Again, let me know in the description. Right, so I'm going to speed up some of this painting bit now because otherwise we will be here until well Christmas. Something I will try and do, if I remember, and that's to leave, well, a description of all the paints that I use in this video um, down in the uh, the comments section or in the description of the video. So rather than obviously then popping up on the screen, because otherwise they'll be popping up, popping off, popping up, popping off sort of thing. Um, yeah, I will try and leave a list of all the, uh, the, the coloured paints that I use. Um, so yeah, look out for that. The other thing, guys, um, as I say, I don't actually play Warhammer 40k, so any of the miniatures that I paint that aren't ones I'm going to play in Kill Team, um, yeah, I am going to sell them. So I've got an eBay account where I've, well, where I put my miniatures. So if you want to sort of buy a, a painted miniature by me, yeah, by all means, go and check out my eBay and have a little look. As I say, this will help the channel out. It helps me buy more stuff, and it, well, it helps me buy some cookies as well, to be honest. So in a recent video, I used the Dirty Down Rust. Um, absolutely loved the uh, loved using it, loved the effect it gave, and it was so easy to use. So I also got, as well as the Dirty Down Rust, I got some Dirty Down Verdigris and Dirty Down Moss. So yeah, this seems like a perfect sort of miniature to try those out on, as well, this is meant to be a pirate in the high seas, and yeah, obviously that's why I paint a lot of this stuff copper, as well, I want to make that look nice and sort of patinaed look. So starting off with the moss, um, one thing I will say with the Dirty Down paints, all of them, um, they need a lot of shaking. I know we always say this with a lot of um, paints, but their ones need a lot of shaking, and quite often you need to stir it to get rid of the, uh, the gunk at the bottom. And as well as all of that, um, I do hold on to the bottles quite a bit to warm them up, as they look and work better when the, uh, the paint is warm. So yeah, a few extra tips there for you buddies. Um, but yeah, this, this stuff goes on really, really well. I'm using an old brush to do this, um, and these, this is something that you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't lick the brush afterwards. It seems a strange thing to say, but uh, if you watch me doing live streams, you will obviously notice I kind of clean the brush with a wet wipe, and then I do stick the brush in my mouth just to clean it a bit more. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't do this with any of these uh, the dirty down stuff, as this, um, well, it's not good for you. <laughs> but the effects it gives are, yeah, awesome. So say this stuff goes on really well. I'm kind of putting it here and there in the gaps, in the cracks, kind of where I think maybe moss might appear. Um, so yeah, really easy to use. But when it dries, um, yeah, the effect this stuff gives is just awesome. And this was my main reason for painting all the uh, the metal bits on this in that sort of like bronze copper look, just because I really wanted to give that the uh, the patina look. Um, yes, yeah, so again, this bottle shaken, 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 and shaken some more. Give it a good old stir. I'm um, using the old brush, and yeah, with this, I'm yeah, no real technique at all here, as you can quite clearly see. I am literally just covering everything in this stuff. Um, so it goes on really nice, goes on really obviously wet uh, and easy to use. But then when this stuff dries, this is where this stuff is absolutely amazing. It dries, and it just yeah, it obviously doesn't look wet in any way. It's a very matte color. But it also dries in a way that it gives um, a bit of texture, or looks like texture to everything. So I just love how it works, and yeah, it just looks amazing. I will go over a little bit art later and do like a little bit of dry brushing over it, just to sort of capture the edges to make them look uh, like they've been sort of knocked and scratched and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, this is where I say my my love and enjoyment of painting really does sort of shine through. That I I want to spend longer painting something, adding more little details in here and there. Um, let's say with his teeth, 
Um, I kind of got carried away painting the teeth, so I didn't film it as much. And again, this, this sort of goes to show just how much I love painting, that sometimes I get that carried away. I uh, Yeah, I forget that I'm meant to be videoing bits, um, so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, with his teeth, basically, I went over and just added a whole variety of uh, whites, creams, even a little bit of brown, um, as well as obviously trying to add in some, um, some sort of like blood stains into his teeth as well. Uh, and yeah, I spent, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just on his teeth, just because I, I was loving it. Um, but then it was a case of getting to a stage where I think, yeah, I need to stop now. I am loving this, but uh, I need to get this miniature painted. Um, so, yeah, this, yeah, I, I can't say, I, I love it. I love painting. <laughs> and I hope you guys love painting, and I hope you guys are still with me, because this video is getting very long now. Right, so we are near the end. And I'm just dry brushing some copper over, obviously, all the, uh, well, the copper areas. Um, again, just to bring a few little highlights here and there, just to obviously catch in the edges and that. Um, but yeah, the dirty down um, paints are absolutely awesome. So link in the description to those guys, as they are just, well, they're just amazing. And they, they work so well, so easily, uh, but the results, yeah, they, they speak for themselves. Lovely stuff. So I, I am now kind of getting towards the end of painting this. I say, I yeah, I love painting this miniature so much. Um, it's definitely one of my favourite miniatures that I've painted, because uh, I loved every bit of it. Uh, but when I came to sort of like looking at the end, I kind of felt that some of his uh, his skin was a bit sort of, a bit flat looking. So I'm actually going over this with a blue wash, um, as opposed to using any of the speed paints. I wanted to use a wash, so it really wouldn't do too much difference in the uh, the colour change. And I say this just obviously helps pool in any of the uh, nooks and crannies, and just makes them darker. Just to say, I, I kind of thought the colour was a little bit flat looking once it had fully dried, even though I did like the look of it. Um, again, this is where, when you're painting, if you're not happy with something, yeah, change it, amend it, add to it. Well, basically, have fun with it, and that's that's what I'm doing here. The whole of this painting, I was having fun. Um, yeah, absolutely loved every little bit of it. Definitely one of my best painted miniatures. Um, certainly my most enjoyable painting miniature as well, I guess. Um, and that being said, yeah, this guy will be on eBay if you want to buy him. <laughs> Just so that I can go out and buy more, well, more grey plastic. Right, guys, if you're still here from the beginning, uh, yeah, you guys deserve a medal. As this video certainly is, well, is now officially the longest video I think I've ever made. Uh, just because there was so much in it. And even though this is quite a long video, I have deleted quite a lot of bits and pieces here and there. Um, yeah, this is probably the last thing I did to this guy was just to give him, well, sort of skull, well, no, crossbones uh, for an eyeball. Just to, um, yeah, give him sort of like an eyeball because I'm no good at painting eyes. And there we go. I say, I am really chuffed and happy with how this dude came out. Um, but then I was looking at him thinking I possibly could add a little bit more to make it, again, look more sort of like sea looking. And this stuff. Well, this stuff I've had in a drawer for about two years. I brought it with the intentions... Well, I'm not too sure. Making bushes, I guess, out of this stuff. Um, but yeah, it sat in a drawer for two years, never used. And then I finally thought, well, this colour almost looks sort of corally looking. Um, yeah, let's add some colour. Let's add some coral. Just because, well, I've never used this stuff. And I think it's time that I did start using more bits and pieces. And again, every little bit sort you do to this just helps helps tell the story. Um, and again, because this is like, a, a, to me, a small diorama. Adding these little bits of coral here and there. Uh, for one, obviously, adds a little bit of colour, because, well, I love the colour orange. So adding a little bit of colour here and there, I think, is good. It's obviously got a texture to it. And, yeah, I think it does fit in with the whole sea theme. So, yeah, really chuffed that I finally got to use something, well, that I've had to say, literally sitting around almost since the start of this channel. I bought lots of bits and pieces. Um, and then, kind of, yeah, never really used them. But now I have, so I'm, I'm very happy. And now let's have another look at this guy in all his glory. Thank you to everyone that's following me on my painting journey. 
Um, as I say, I, I'm loving this journey and I hope I can sort of spread some love to you guys and get you guys sort of into, uh, well, into just loving this. And as I say, for me to be able to paint something that comes out this good, um, yeah, I never could have imagined I could have done this. And yet it was so simple and so easy. I just want to say a big thank you to B Computers for sending me this miniature. Um, don't forget to check out the link down below, guys. Show them some love. And a big thank you to all my lovely patrons and Chaos Cards for helping support the channel. That means so much to me. There's another video on the screen, guys. Give that a click, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.